Well, I think we've heard lots of great examples so far of these applications of AI for good. But one of the concerns we have is, will there be people out there who use AI for evil? And I think what we've already started to see is while many of us are very positive on artificial intelligence, there will be this emerging group of hacktivists, people who basically want society to lose trust in artificial intelligence. And we're starting to see the early signs of that now. So let's talk about kind of a real world example. So in London, in April, the new ultra low emission zones were implemented. And while I've heard there's some controversy about how it was implemented, um, really the goal is to make sure that there's more clean air. Well, London's not alone in this quest. And one of our customers is actually the city of Las Vegas. And in the city of Las Vegas, they're using advanced 5G and artificial intelligence and IoT solutions to improve air quality. So the way their application works is they place sensors on the bottom of every traffic light in the city of Las Vegas. And as cars line up at the traffic light, if the light is red, of course the levels of carbon dioxide go up and the sensor detects that and it changes the light signal from red to green, the cars start moving along, the air quality improves. Now this is just one of many programs using 5G and artificial intelligence that the city of Las Vegas has deployed. In fact, they've already deployed several hundred thousand sensors. It's the traffic systems, the emergency response systems. They've even placed sensors along the pedestrian walkways on the strip of Las Vegas to help keep their 40 million visitors a year safe. They only have five people in their security team trying to monitor all of these systems. And they know that now that they've connected everything, their attack surface has increased. So how are five people going to defend against that? Well, that's where the artificial intelligence comes in. So we've created a system that's based on the principles of the human body's immune system. And we have skin, and that skin is our protective barrier. And it keeps us safe most of the time. But occasionally, a bacteria or a virus does get inside. But our immune system has this innate sense of self. And therefore, it understands not self. When something gets inside, it has a very precise and very rapid response. That is exactly how our cyber AI system works. So let's drill down kind of a level below this. So what we're actually doing is analyzing data in real time. That data can be flowing through a cloud, it can be flowing through a network, an email system, IoT devices, and we grab about 400 data features out of that traffic as it goes through. And we use that to build a pattern of life of every user and device that's connected to it. That's how we understand normal. Now sometimes people say, okay, that's very advanced AI for anomaly detection. But it's really going beyond that, and this is what's extremely unique. It's actually figuring out how to use the AI to investigate that threat, how to actually decide what action to take, and to take the action. So that sets this technology apart from everything else that's out there. In fact, across our 2,500 customers, this technology is detecting and stopping a threat every three seconds around the world. Now, this whole area is rapidly shifting. It's no longer going to be simply about people creating attacks. So most of the attacks you hear about and read about are human hands on a keyboard. Let me give you an example of an attack that just was detected last month. 
This was actually an attacker who decided to try to break into GPS systems in cars. And he was effective at breaking into over 100,000 cars through this GPS system. And he found out once he broke into the GPS system that there was actually a screen in it, and one of the settings on it was to shut the engine of the car off. And he just figured out that if the car slowed down to under 12 miles per hour, he could shut the engine off. Now in our case, our software, our AI, would detect that someone had broken into the GPS system and it would enforce the normal pattern of life providing the driver continuous control of that vehicle. And the hacker would be ineffective. What this means is the car has to fight back. And in our approach, each piece of technology becomes self-defending, self-learning, self-detecting, self-responding. That's where this needs to go to. And the reason for that is, as we deploy more AI systems, and as this whole new category of hacktivists and organized cyber criminals and nation state attackers start to attack the AI, we need to have self-defending systems. But we also think that just like the defenders are gonna to start to use artificial intelligence, so are the attackers. So what would this look like? We've set up in Cambridge what we call an offensive and adversarial artificial intelligence lab. And I'd like to cover one of the areas that we think attackers could start using. And that is an area called GANs, Generative Adversarial Networks. Now the way a GAN kind of works is there's two AI systems and they compete against each other and they make each other smarter. So the first AI system is going to generate information and the second AI system is going to try to discriminate and figure out whether the data from the first system is real or fake. And I'm gonna show a quick example of this. In this example, the task at hand for these GAN was actually to try to create photographs of people who have never existed. So these people were never alive. So let's look at how this system works. Now at first we just see a bunch of pixels. The system's not very smart. It's just starting to learn. It's gonna take a while to try to create people. Okay, now it's starting to take shape, but it's still learning. And the first system is creating more and more potential images of fake people and the discriminator is still kind of trying to come up to speed. But as we fast forward, it starts to get clearer and clearer. And eventually, it's fairly successful at creating what looks like, in most cases, they could be real people. Now this is just an example of the capability that GANs have today. Now why do we worry about this from a cyber perspective? Well, we can see it wasn't that difficult for a system to create fakes of what looks like things in the real world. What if attackers start trying to use these types of techniques and they create fake data? Let's say, for example, they get inside a financial institution like a bank and they just decide to alter or create fake data in 10% of the systems but we don't know which 10%, so now we don't know which data we can trust. What if they actually decide to try to emulate real people? And the, the system thinks that that's a real person behaving in a normal way, but it's not. Again, it's a person that's never existed, and now they're inside the system. This is just one of many, many types of AI techniques that attackers can use. What does this mean for cybersecurity on a global basis? Well, this means just like we're using AI for all of these good applications, it means that it's very likely that AI will get in the hands of the attackers. 
as we've seen, there has already been nation state level types of attacks that leak out and eventually get, the, get in the hands of the attackers on the dark web. And when they do, they spread like wildfire around the globe. What happens when one of those sophisticated, stealthy, silent, fast-moving AI attacks makes its way to the dark web? If we don't have self-defending AI technology presenting, protecting our corporate networks and every device that we use, we're not going to be able to defend with humans. There's no way we're going to be able to throw enough security experts at this problem. It's going to become a war of algorithm against algorithm. And from our perspective, we want to make sure that the best algorithms on the side of good win. Thank you very much.